well well i'm starting just starting there was some glitch actually technical glitch that is why i got late just give me one more one minute Hello everyone. Good morning. Kaise ho sabhi log? How is everyone? Fine, ma'am. Fine, fine. Okay. So, how was your test? How was the test, everyone? Okay. So, it must be. It must have went well, I guess. In terms of, you all must have sat for some three hours in first shifts. again for 3 hours in second set and then you must have attempted your questions so today agenda of the class is to discuss questions that uh, you got yesterday and what will be the methods uh, like in the first in the very first class i told you all that uh, like i discussed what pattern of questions you all will be get so the pattern was something like uh, like there will be some 25% questions that will be easy Easy in the sense I have discussed already, and then there will be another forty-five questions that will be moderate done, and then there will be a raise thirty percent question that will be your tough done. So uh, I already said that what you have to do, uh, what we need to do actually. So we need to avoid this thirty percent tough questions, and we need to focus on this seventy percent. Seventy percent will be enough for our result, right? so we don't need to waste our time on this 30% question that will be actually lengthy more calculative but this 70% we can easily have a hold on done so in the test paper discussion also i have taken care of this point like i will be uh, giving you some uh, i will, i have included all this 70% of questions again so uh, when i was going through yesterday paper i noticed that like more like out of 18 questions there were some 13 questions which were under the category of easy and moderate which uh, you must yes kisor that i have done actually uh, easy and moderate question that i have filtered done so i took hold the pain of just going through all the questions and uh, looking at ki which questions will be actually easy and moderate moderate question are generally conceptual things but calculation is not lengthy easy questions are like ki more easily clickable right so uh, let's go through the question then uh, you will get to know what it is actually because you were having you are having your paper right so whatever the questions i have included you can just go through those questions and see if yeah these are easy these are not right or also you can do one thing like you people can form a group and you can add me there there i will be uh, like uh, informing you regarding ki which 13 questions because i i didn't in, i couldn't include actually all 13 questions from both the paper because adding both it will become some 26 and discussing 26 question in 1.5 hours not easy right it's, it's not possible actually so i have included some 19 question from each portion so i can uh, like uh, give you all those 13 13 question from both the papers just make one group add me there and uh, or ask your teacher to do that uh, there i will be guiding you people right chalo so let's get started with the very first question that is your uh, this was the question in the very first uh, in the first paper question number 5 i guess so impedance z1 in figure can be regarded as pure resistance r1 12 ohm done so this was uh, your resistor actually and its resistance was 12 ohm whereas impedance z2 is associated with series resistance r2 8 ohm and capacitance 1 microfarad so it is combination of resistor plus capacitor done and resistor resistor ka resistance you already know whatever value is given that will be uh, true like it, here it is 8 ohm and for c uh, what used to be the resistance of uh, or we call it impedance of capacitor that is equal to 1 by omega c done and that can be written as if frequency is given then that can be written as omega can be written as 2 pi f and this is c done so this was the question now, now uh, here frequency value is given 
uh, voltage amplitude is given and we were asked what is the power dissipated in Z2. So what is the power dissipated in Z2 arm of the circuit? Uh, sorry, in Z2 uh, element. So Z2 consists of two parts, resistor and capacitor. We already know that capacitor and inductor doesn't consume any power because they are the phase between uh, current and voltage used to be what? 90 degrees. Then, so if phase between current and voltage is 90 degree, no power it will be able to consume. So in Z2, only register will be consuming the power. And what power will it be consuming? You just uh, see the circuit. This is current flowing. Then, so if current is I, then uh, uh, if current is I, then power dissipated in Z2 will be what? I square R. Again, one thing to note here is the current is variable. So which value of I we will be taking? Very simple, we will be taking I RMS, right? So here power dissipated, we will be writing as I square, I RMS ka square into R2. Because we have to tell power consume across Z2. So I RMS ka square into R2. Question is this much simple, right? So I RMS ka square meaning what you are going to do? If I RMS, you need to calculate. So it will be V RMS by impedance of the circuit. Whole circuit ka impedance we need to consider because we are uh, calculating current. So V RMS by I am calling net impedance Z. So V RMS by Z ka square into R2. Now the task is to calculate Z. So how we calculate Z? You already have studied. We just need to draw a triangle. Across this line, we write the net resistance of the circuit. Whatever resistor is there. So here net resistance will be what? Z1 value of Z1 has 12 ohm value of resistor. Z2 has 8 ohm value of resistor. These two resistors are in series. So what will be the value of net resistance? You just write here. Net resistance will be 12, uh, sorry, 20 ohm, right? And across the y-axis, we write the uh, omega, uh, sorry, uh, xc minus xl kind of we write this and here there is no inductor. So only we are going to write what? Impedance of the capacitor. And that will be equal to how much? 2 pi F, uh, F, C, done. So let's put the value now. So oh, X, C will be equal to 1 by 2 pi F, C. Just put the values 1 by 2 pi. F ka value is how much? You can see here F is your 5000 hertz and C is 1 microfarad. So this is your 5 into 10 to the power 3 and this is your 10 to the power minus 6. So how much value we are getting, going to get? We are going to get 5 into 2, 10 and this become 10 to the power minus 2. Done. So we can uh, write here 100 by 5. Something like that we will be getting, correct? Yes. So that value we are going to get. This is your XC. Now uh, XC value you just write here. This is 100 by 5. So what will be the Z? Z value simply square these two. Just treat it as a, as a triangle. Height is given, base is given. So Z square can be written as what? 100 by pi ka square plus 20 ka square. Done. So this will be pi square. Uh, in the question, it is given as take pi square is 10. So aap pe kya likhoge? you will be writing here uh, 100 ka square, pi ka square, that is 10 plus 400. So this will come as something 1400. Then, so Z square is how much? 1400. We don't need to calculate much now actually uh, because here you see VRMS ka square by Z ka square we need to write. So VRMS ka square will be how much? V0 is 30. VRMS will be how much? 30 by root 2. So this will become 900 by 2. I have squared it, right? And Z ka square. Z ka square is how much? 1400. R2 value is how much? 8. So we just need to calculate this. This is 3600 by 1400. So 36 by 14. So the answer will be what? Uh, answer will be 2.57. So the question was this much. Again, this is, uh, uh, you can say easy or moderate, anything you wish to call. So this will, this will come under easy only. Okay. Now, this is a very easy question. You just need to play with the words here. Just need to play with words. Like you have come across one more type of this type of question. That is your 
river boat boat wala problem then so there also in that questions also there used to be a, a play of words only like here how a parachute is distance uniformly at a speed of 8 meter per second in calm weather just focus on this word it is said that in calm weather uh, the parachute is descending coming down with a speed of 8 meter per second right so calm weather kehne ka matlab what, what does it indicate it indicates that wind is not blowing so if we are taking wind as rest then the parachute is descending with a speed of 8 meter per second downward it means what it means velocity of parachute with respect to wind is given as 8 meter per second and if i am going to say ki uh, this direction i am taking as minus y axis this as plus x axis this as plus y like that ठीक है जैसे इन रिवर बोट प्रॉब्लम वी वी फाइंड द स्टेटमेंट्स लाइक कि वेलोसिटी ऑफ बोट इन अ स्टील वाटर राइट स्टील वाटर मीनिंग व्हाट व्हेन वाटर इज एट रेस्ट मींस वी आर टेकिंग वाटर एज इन रेस्ट देन वी आर सीइंग कि व्हाट विल बी द वेलोसिटी ऑफ बोट सो दैट मींस वेलोसिटी ऑफ बोट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वाटर सेम थिंग इज हियर सो वेलोसिटी ऑफ पैराशूट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू विंड नाउ व्हाट विल बी द टर्मिनल स्पीड ऑफ पैराशूट If there is a six meter crosswind in the horizontal direction, now suppose wind started blowing. So wind is blowing in this direction. Velocity of wind with respect to ground is in this direction, and that is how much six meter per second. So if I uh, write it vectorially, eight meter per second minus j cap, I will write and velocity of wind with respect to ground is how much six meter per second i cap i will. ठीक है नाउ व्हाट वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट यू जस्ट सी व्हाट विल बी द टर्मिनल स्पीड ऑफ पैराशूट पैराशूट का स्पीड पूछ रहा है सो इफ विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू इज नॉट मेंशन इट मींस इट इज आस्किंग विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू ग्राउंड सो वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट द वेलोसिटी ऑफ पैराशूट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू ग्राउंड सिंपल दिस वाज द क्वेश्चन सो हाउ यू विल बी एबल टू डू दैट सो यू कैन इजीली कैलकुलेट दिस बीपी माइनस वी डब्ल्यू दिस विल बिकम and this will become vw minus vg right so if you are going to add these two we are going to get what we are going to get vp done so we just need to add these two and when we are going to add these two vectorially what we are going to get so vpg ka if magnitude i i go on to calculate it will become how much 8 square plus 6 ka square because angle between these two is 90 degree so this will become 10 meter per second. so the answer will be what it will be b done so this was very easy question again you just needed to be careful with the words with the statements right so this was this now this is a question again this was also a kind of uh, i will say a moderate question here you needed to do a little bit of visualization what the question is suppose you are sitting inside a car and car is going in your forward direction right forward direction car is moving wind is also blowing so a uh, beam will just crack like it will hit against your windows like right so uh, i'm poor at diagram i can't draw the car actually but uh, i will do one thing uh, what the question is car has a side window made of glass having a size 14 to 40 and that glass must have some thickness right the car is traveling with a velocity of 40 meter per second in still air right so velocity of car with respect to air is how much 40 meter per second density of air can be assumed to be like this the windows are closed so how should i draw the car this is a very tough task for me right i don't know i will draw the car but how to draw the window anyway just imagine there I is a window right Uh, what? A square box in the box, big box. It's just I like a window. Sorry, I didn't get you. Can you type? Yes, I'm waiting for you. ठीक है यू पीपल अच्छा थैंक यू फॉर द सजेशन डन है यू पीपल आर वेरी क्रिएटिव यू नो 
you people are very creative really so this is the window huh? thank you so this is the window what is happening wind is blowing 3d uh, kind of diagram it will be so this is the window so so uh, uh, what will happen if the wind is too uh, like first just imagine you you are sitting inside wind is blowing outside you won't feel the heat of uh, you won't feel the force of uh, a uh, wind because it is getting obstructed by your window so that force of wind must be falling on what uh, window panes right so uh, if i am going to draw the uh, window panes here like this so what is happening we are inside and wind is blowing outside then uh, here the pressure let us take here pressure is p out something and here the pressure is p in some so if you are going to apply the bernoulli's equation here just apply the bernoulli's equation uh, what will happen height factor is not going to come because we are applying at this point and at this point both are at same uh, height level so height thing is not going to come into account but let's take the velocity thing into account so p not plus half rho v square equal to p in plus now just imagine one thing you are sitting inside a room and there is a storm outside so that speed of the storm you won't feel inside the room why because there is wall in between so that velocity is not going to come into account inside the car then so here velocity can be taken as zero so it will become here zero and height factor is already cancelled so something like this now you can see p inside is what p inside is Uh, greater than p outside then uh, there is more pressure inside so if there is more pressure uh, yes more pressure is inside now because it is equal to p not plus something so from outside inside pressure is more and if inside pressure is more it means it if it breaks if window panes break then the this window pane will fall outside or inside simple eh? it will fall outside because inside pressure is more outside pressure would have been more what would be the case this window pane will fall inside so uh, there are two options if the glass is very thin it may break and fall into the car if the glass is very thin it may break and fall out of the car so it will fall what it will fall out of the car first thing theek okay? hai because this pressure thing is making it happen like this done so that is clear now how much thin it should be shear strength is already given shear strength is given here now let me draw the window pane uh, like glass something like this i don't know if i will be able to do the justice here i'm trying yes i feel like i'm successful so uh, can you imagine this window pane will look something like this it will have some thickness as well let's call it t then let's call it t so uh, what happens in here shear strength is given it means some uh, shear kind of shear strain must be originating here and you have studied in your uh, textbook that shear stress looks like what uh, like cylinder diagram was given there and force was acting parallel to the area then force was acting parallel to the area then and it was getting displaced by some length uh suppose it is getting displaced something like this you must have studied right so this was a, a small displacement this was height then so a uh, force per unit area you were you were writing like shear strength uh, sorry modulus of uh, modulus of this rigidity into what delta l by l something like this was happening you just imagine this case here this kind of shear stress will act on this this surface this face also on this face it will act also on this face it will act also on this face it will act so four on four surfaces this shear stress will be acting then what i wanted to show is just by drawing this diagram i wanted to show you ki uh, this kind of force will be acting on such four surfaces these four surfaces are this so you just needed a bit of imagination here now what is the significance of this so significance of this is that if 
आउटसाइड प्रेशर इज वॉट लेस इन साइड प्रेशर इज वॉट मोर सो वॉट इज द प्रेशर डिफरेंस प्रेशर डिफरेंस इज पी इन माइनस पी आउट सो वॉट इज द फोर्स एक्टिंग इफ आई अप्लाई फोर्स एक्टिंग सो दैट विल बी पी इन माइनस पी आउट इन टू एरिया विच एरिया वी विल बी कंसिडरिंग हियर दिस एरिया and this area is equal to how much 14 to 40 so that is sorted now we must we need to calculate equate it to some something because we needed to calculate the thickness done so this can be uh, equated to what like in the question it is said that shear strength is 40 millipascal so this kind of uh, this kind of phase can sustain how much pressure 40 millipascal Done, and if you are going to calculate the area of this uh, area of this, so what will be its area? Its area will be your what? Forty into t. If you imagine it very carefully, it will be forty into t. Where t is the thickness, right? So area is going to be what? Forty into t, and there will be such how many uh faces four. So total area you are going to take as this. Now this is your area, and maximum pressure that each area can sustain is how much? It is given as forty millipascal. So you have to equate it to forty millipascal. Now you just need to convert everything to proper unit. So P in minus P out can be written as half rho v square. Area forty centimeter into forty. That is your sixteen hundred into ten to the power minus four. Equal to how much you are going to write? Fourteen to ten to the power minus two into t because it was in centimeter into forty into ten to the power six. So if you are going to calculate it, you are going to get the value of t. Means what should be the max like minimum thickness for it to not break? Done. So that will give you the answer. So little bit imagination was needed. You just needed to close your eyes and see it. If window panes are there and wind is blowing like this, wind is blowing like this. So uh, this is kind of a three D surface. It has some thickness t. So this wind will apply shear stress on it, then and on its four surfaces, right? So that you need to imagine. I hope it is clear. Again, uh, if if this question is not sorted, it what? i will suggest you to do is to go and just try to visualize a bit visualization is very important theek okay? hai that will help you a lot chalo so this question was ultimately very easy very much you can simply look at the equations carefully and answer everything within some 1.5 minute or 2 minutes done so what is the first equation just you try to first remember ki what is the standard equation of wave so standard equation of wave we used to write like y is equal to a sin kx minus omega t if you all remember standard equation of wave we used to write like this last chapter 11th class second part of physics so a sin kx minus omega t which equation is falling under this category this one this is not falling under that category in this is omega t minus kx we need to uh, like you know what you need to remember the basics of everything like what is the basic equation of uh, wave so this is this just try to see ki which equation is fitting into this this one which one not this one try to convert it into the basic form so what we can do here uh, one equation is given as s2 is given as 1 micrometer sin pi by 4x minus 100 pi t done and what we can write for s2 for s2 uh, sorry s1 s2 is already in the standard form s1 i can do one thing you all are math student and you are more smart than me uh, you just do one thing sin what we can do we have we already know that sin pi minus theta is how much uh, sin pi minus theta is how much sin theta so here we need to do some minus now then only this pi by 4x will become plus and this will become minus done so what i am going to do is i am going to do pi minus whatever angle is inside so that is 100 pi t minus pi by 4x plus pi by 3 done so this thing i am going to do so what i will be getting 1 micrometer sin uh this will become how much pi minus 100 pi t 
प्लस फाइव बाई फोर एक्स माइनस फाइव बाई थ्री सो वॉट इट इज बिकमिंग अगेन वन माइक्रोमीटर साइन नाउ इट्स टाइम टू राइट इट प्रॉपरली फाइव बाई फोर एक्स माइनस हंड्रेड फाइव थ्री प्लस हाउ मच फाइव माइनस फाइव बाई थ्री दैट इज योर हाउ मच टू फाइव बाई थ्री नाउ द क्वेश्चन बोथ आर इन सेम फॉर्म है And both have kx minus omega t plus phi something. Here phi is zero and here phi is two pi by. Now this two, I always recommend to write waves in a vector form when you have to calculate the net amplitude. Suppose we have to calculate the net amplitude for s two and s one. How we will go for that? That's the question. So always I recommend draw two vectors. So I have drawn two vectors. Length of vectors. Take the length of vectors. Vectors as their amplitude. So its amplitude is one micrometer. Its amplitude is also one micr. Now focus on their phase angles. So here phase angle is what? Whatever is under sine. So this is the phase angle of first wave. What is the phase angle of second wave? Phase angle of second wave is this. So calculate the phase difference. That will be angle between these two. So if we are going to minus subtract these two, what we are going to get? Two pi by three. 2 pi by 3. That is 120 degree. So this diagram is not fitting correctly. So diagram will something look like this: 120 degree. One is one micrometer, and another is also one micrometer. Now my background is ready. Now we need to read all the options. The velocity of both the wave is same. Now it is asking about velocity. You know what you need to do in case of velocity. I'm just giving you one thing. Y is equal to if wave is written as sine. K x minus omega t plus phi. So if you have to calculate the velocity now, what you need to do, if, even if the wave equation is very complex, whatever is inside sine or cos, you just take that out. You just write it separately and take it as constant. Because it will be constant. If you go deep into the equation of wave, how it is coming, then you will realize this is constant. And then you differentiate it with respect to Time. So, if we are going to differentiate it with respect to time, what we are going to get, we are going to get something like this. So, here this is v and this is omega. So, v is how much? Omega by k. Done. So, if if the coefficient of x and coefficient of time, if coefficient of x and coefficient of time are same for equations, then their velocity will be same. So, in this case. Coefficient of x is pi by four. Here, coefficient of x is pi by four. Here, coefficient of time is hundred pi. Here, coefficient of time is hundred pi. Both are same, right? So their velocity is going to be what same. Now both the waves are equally intense. Intensity of wave depends on what amplitude the square. So if both the waves have same amplitude, it means both will be same intense. So actually here both the waves are same intense or of same intensity because their amplitudes are same. So this is also true. Now, they superimpose to produce a wave of amplitude one micrometer. Superimposition means you need to add these two waves. So add these two. How to add it? Go vectorially. I have drawn the vectors here. So this is two equal vectors at one twenty degree. Their resultant will be what? Same as one vector, right? So its resultant will be one square plus one square plus two into one into one into cos one twenty. Cos one twenty value is how much? It is equal to minus half. So one plus one two two minus one one done. So root one is one. Clear here. So this is also true. Now both the waves, plane waves, propagating in plus x direction. So if wave is propagating in plus x direction, here minus comes, and if wave is propagating in negative x direction, here plus sign comes. That is a fact, right? Again, coming from the derivation only. So here the wave is moving in plus x direction because here the sign is what it is minus. Is it clear? Anyone having any doubt? Again, this question was very easy. Is there any doubt? Is clear? Is it done? Let's go. ये छोटी छोटी चीजें दिमाग में रखनी है ठीक है तृप्ति कुछ डाउट है क्या नो मैम यस मैम मतलब मेरे मेरे क्वेश्चन का आंसर कैन बी ट्रू यस एंड नो बोथ सो आई वांट टू नो इट इज इट पॉजिटिव आंसर और पॉजिटिव मींस 
मतलब यू अंडरस्टूड और नॉट चलो बता दो मुझे नो डाउट थैंक यू चलो ठीक है सो लेट्स सी दिस क्वेश्चन अगेन दिस वाज वेरी इजी अगेन यू नीड टू नो द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट क्वेश्चन क्या है क्यू अमाउंट ऑफ हीट इज एडेड टू मिक्सचर ऑफ हीलियम एंड नाइट्रोजन एट कॉन्स्टेंट वॉल्यूम चलो लेट्स ड्रॉ डू टू डायग्राम सपोज वी आर हैविंग अ कंटेनर एंड दिस कंटेनर इज एट कॉन्स्टेंट हियर वॉल्यूम इज कॉन्स्टेंट ए ले रही हूँ वॉल्यूम को ठीक है एंड लेट्स कंसिडर अनदर कंटेनर एंड हेयर वॉट इज कॉन्स्टेंट प्रेशर इज कॉन्स्टेंट डन सो दिस टू केसेस वर गिवेन वट इज हैपनिंग हेयर वी आर एडिंग हाउ मच अमाउंट ऑफ हिट सिक्स हंड्रेड जूल ऑफ हिट इज एडिंग इज गेटिंग एडेड इट इज हीम ऑल्सो सेम कंटेनर इज हेयर इट इज ही डन टेम्परेचर ऑफ मिक्सर इंक्रीजेज बाई फिफ्टीन के In first case, temperature is increasing by how much? Fifteen k. And in second case, temperature is increasing by how much? Ten k. Now, what else we can do here? What it is asking actually? Internal energy change more in isobaric. Work done by gas is more in isobaric. Uh, isobaric total number of moles in the mixture is this is your two point four ten moles. Then so these are the options. How to solve it? सबसे पहले लेट्स एड्रेस दिस बी एंड सी ऑप्शन ठीक है सो वॉट हैपन्स एट कॉन्स्टेंट वॉल्यूम सो वॉल्यूम इज कॉन्स्टेंट एंड यू आर गिविंग हीट टू इट वॉट हैपन्स वेन वी गिव हीट टू अ सिस्टम वट विल हैपन इफ आई एम गिविंग यू सम एनर्जी वट यू विल डू यू विल प्रीफर टू स्टोर सम एनर्जी एंड एट द सेम टाइम यू विल प्रीफर टू सम वर्क विद दैट एनर्जी सो इफ आई एम गिविंग क्यू अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी टू यू वट यू विल डू यू विल डू सम वर्क and you will store some energy as internal energy then so my work will uh, my heat will get divided into two parts then but if there is no scope of doing work suppose you are feeling very lazy and you don't want to work what will happen your heat will totally get stored in the form of your internal energy then so that the case with first first what is happening volume is constant no work is getting done so whatever heat you are giving that will get a stored in the form of internal energy so definitely its internal energy will increase more rather than in this case because in both the cases same amount of energy we are giving so here some work it is doing because if this process is isobaric so this heat is getting divided into two part work done mein bhi ja raha hai and in some part in the form of internal energy and here only in one form that is internal energy so definitely internal energy change is more in isobaric process and work done by the gas is more in isobaric here because here the work done is zero and this is some work done so both the statement b and c are what correct then so b and c are correct now let's move on to the total number of moles in the mixture how we will be calculating that now that's the task you just see here what we need to do is helium is given this is a monoatomic gas right so for monoatomic gas we can understand what will be the value of cb and cp then why cb and cp required here we are giving heat at constant volume so heat given at constant volume can be written as what it can be written as n cb delta t then then clear hai so this is 6000 and n uh, cb n cb chalo abhi aise hi rehne do delta t value is how much in this case 15 so from here what we are getting uh, uh, ncv is equal to how much uh, 40 mix 15000 uh what ma'am delta yes. t is 15000 there ha delta t is 15 na 15 15 15 The same thing I have written here. Done, no? Fifteen thousand? No, no. This is Kelvin. This is Kelvin. Q is equal to six hundred. Okay, that is true. Okay, so how you are telling temperature change fifteen thousand? Yes, yes, correct. Okay, no? Thank. Q thirty. So this is ah ah forty. Then NCB is forty. Now let's see. This heat was getting added at constant. No, no, Kishore. That is unit of temperature, na Kelvin. So 
so here what is happening delta t is how much 10k and heat is getting added at constant pressure so heat getting added at constant pressure what will be the formula ncp delta t done again this is 600 joule this is n cp let it be like that this is 10 so ncp is how much ncp is 60 done why not writing here cv and cp value you can see here carefully ncp and ncv we have got we can utilize it like we can do one thing here uh, n cp minus ncv can be written as what 20 done and n cp minus cv is how much cp minus cv it is coming now 20 so uh, cp minus cv can be written as r that is equal to what r now and r value can be written as what r value can be written as 25 by 3 so this is 25 by 3 equal to 20 now, if you're going to solve this, how, what values you will be getting? This is your 12 by 5. So, N is how much? 12 by 5. That is equal to 2.4. So, option D is also correct. Done. Now, we need to see the ratio, uh, ratio of number of nitrogen molecules and helium molecules in the mixture. Done. So, this was mixture of two gases. And this CV is CV of mixture. This CP is CP of mixture, right? So, how we will calculate this ratio now? So, you just write any of this. Like, if I'm going to write CV of mixture, suppose. So, CV of mixture can be written as what? N1, CV1 plus N2, CV2. These are the formulas, now. N1 plus N2. Now, CV of mixture can be written as what? From here, you can see CV of mixture is equal to how much? This is? Uh, uh, like uh, you can write from here CV of mixture is 40 by N hai na? or you can write here N, N can be written as what? N can be written as uh, 20 by here N can be written as 20 by something right? So here what you need to do na? CV mixture you need to put from there and then you need to check so that you can very easily do now then that is doable quite easily. So then you will notice that N1 equal to N2. So that task I'm leaving up, up onto you people, right? We will be doing this. Chalo. So uh, let's discuss because I want to discuss more and more of question. So here you see what you have to do here. What was the question? Very easy. Again, I have included only easy and moderate questions. Where calculation is less, you needed to apply the logic. So there are two simple pendulum made of a small mass M, which are pulled to another sides. Done. So uh, this M mass was at six degree of angle. This M mass was at three degree of angle. So they were pulled first to these angles and then they were released. So this mass will fall. This mass will fall and they will meet somewhere here. Done. They are meeting. And how is their meeting? They are meeting elastically. Collision is elastic. Just give me uh, some 30 seconds, okay? Hello, TK. I'm back. Uh, done. So they, they are meeting elastically. Now we have uh, learned the elastic collision. What happens in elastic collision? You already know elastic collisions. Momentum will be conserved. Energy will be conserved. This is very basic. And one thing is what? If elastic collision is happening between two equal masses, then what happens after collision? They exchange their velocity. These small, small points are very important that have helps us usually in question solving. Okay? So these two masses are going to exchange their velocities after collision. Done. So this mass will carry the velocity of uh, this mass and this mass will carry the velocity of this mass. Sorry, this one. So if, if I call one, if I call it two, so one will take the velocity of two, two will take the velocity of one. What is the meaning of this? What is the significance of this? It means 
think two was falling from six degree angle, one was falling from three degree angle. After collision, uh, uh, one has taken the velocity of two. It means it will maximum go up to what angle now? It will maximum go up to now 60. And one has taken the velocity of what? Uh, sorry, two has taken the velocity of what? One. So now it will only go up to 3D. Okay. So their amplitudes, uh, amplitudes have also got exchanged. That is the thing ha happening here. Done. So question is what? Question is, at, after what time from the release? So time we are counting from the moment we are releasing. Will the left mass, left mass it is talking about, reach point from where it was released? Then, so left mass, uh, after what time the left mass will reach at the same point from where it was released? So from where it was released, it was released from three degree. Then uh, uh, let me just show you here. So from three degree it was released. Then so first it, uh, it reached to this position. Then and after that, while coming back, it has tendency to go up to six degree. But we have to calculate time only up to this point. Then because it is asking ki, after what time it will reach the same position from where it was released. So we have to calculate this time and again this time. How we will do that? That's the question. So initially it was at three degree angle. So its amplitude was three degree initially. And it is falling from extreme position to mean position. So if I calculate the time period, Time period of pendulum used to be what? 2 pi L by G. It is independent of amplitude, right? So 2 pi, length is given 1 meter, G is given as pi square. So if I'm going to solve it, I, I will get 2 seconds. So 2 seconds is the time period. It means the, uh, from extreme. It is in 2 seconds, it will move from extreme to mean, mean to another extreme, again this extreme to mean, and again to this. So, if I have to calculate only this time, it means it will take how much time? T by 4. Huh? It will take how much time? T by 4. Done. So, T by 4. Yani ki from coming from here to here, it is taking how much time? T by 4. That is 2 by 4. That is half second. Now, from going here to here, how much time will it take? Can we always use unitary method for calculating time? No. This is a big warning sign you should not use. Just say, pe I use the unitary method for which case? I, I said that he, if my pendulum is at extreme position and if it is coming here and then going here, again, another extreme, coming again here and again going. So this whole time is termed as time period. So for one, I took the T by four. I used the unitary method. But only up to this limit you can use from one extreme to mean, mean to extreme. But not always you can. Achha, T by 4. Okay. I am explaining Tripti. T by 4, I said, na, ki T ka matlab kya hota hai? I said you T ka matlab kya hota hai? Jaysay, yaha pe ek pendulum hai. Mera initially pendulum tha extreme position. My pendulum was initially at what? Extreme position. What is happening now? From extreme, it is coming to mean position. That is, this point and again from this mean it is going to this again to this extreme it is coming to mean and again from this mean it is coming to extreme yani ki from the point at which it is started so the time that it takes to come back to its original position of a start is termed as time period then so that was the extreme position in this case so time period t means all these four motions then t so uh, here we are only asked ki what time it will take from uh, this extreme to this mean. So simply I broke it into one fourth portion. So that is why I took T by four time. Done. So from coming this extreme to mean, it is taking T by four. Again, we have to see ki, we have to calculate ki from this mean position, how much time it will take to reach to again three degree. But in this case, this three degree is not the extreme position. Its extreme position is 60. So, uh, can we say like if from here to here it will take T by 4, then from here to here it will take T by 8? No. We can't use unitary method. We avoid it hugely. For this fourth chakkar only you can do that. Otherwise, please don't use. Then what else you will be using? Simply equations. 
what is the equation so time if the motion is simple harmonic or periodic kind of equations can be written as displacement can be written as a sin omega t. if it is uh, if, if if it is starting from the mean position so this body is just starting uh, this pendulum is just starting for the 6 degree amplitude motion from here only mean position so I have taken sign. If it is just starting from extreme, I, I will take cause that you already know. Then, but here the displacement is not in term of x, it is in term of angle. So up a kam karo theta liklo, theta equal to theta naught, that is amplitude, sine omega. Then now the question is simple. It has to move, it, it, it has to move to what angle? 3 degree. Then so theta value is 3 degree. Theta naught amplitude, how much it is? 6 degree sine omega t. Now you solve this 3 degree by 6 degree will become half sine omega t equal to half omega t will be will be equal to how much? You just tell me now omega t will be equal to your pi by 6. Done. And from here you can calculate the time. So time will be pi by 6 into omega. And omega can be written as just omega ko aap kya likhte ho? t equal to 2 pi by omega where t is the time period. So this will become, omega will become equal to how much? 2 pi by t. So this t is coming at t by 12. Again, t will remain as 2 seconds because it doesn't depend on the amplitude. So from here to here, it is taking half second. And from here to here, it will take how much time? t by 12. That is your 2 by 12. That is 1 by 6 seconds. So total time, t total, you will be writing as half plus 1 by uh, 6. That is your answer. Clear it? So question was very simple actually. You just needed to be updated with uh, what you do in uh, such kind of motions. Right? Is it clear or anyone has any doubt? If you doubt, hai, you can let me know. Otherwise, let's move. Is there doubt? Hai? Okay. Okay, chalo. Thank, thank you for letting me know. It helps actually. It helps so much. So, chalo. Okay, uh, now uh, let's do again. Let's uh, understand this question. This was damn easy. I will say this was easiest. Then, so there were two wavelengths, lambda 1 and lambda 2. Double slit experiment is there. And if nothing is written, it means all approximations that we have taken while, uh, uh, while reading YDS experiment will be true. Then if nothing is given like key, what the distance between a slit and a screen is and what is the slit width and all. Then if nothing, a question is talking about that, it means all approximation will be true. So here, though two wavelengths are getting used in the YDSC experiment and the question is key. Let me first draw the YDSC brother. Okay. So this is happening here. Now let's take any position on the screen. What it is saying for wavelength lambda one, which is 430 nanometer, what value, uh, what value must the other have for the fourth order of bright fringe of lambda one? Fourth order of bright fringe of lambda one we are taking to fall on the sixth order bright fringe of lambda two. Then, so we are we are uh, seeing that fourth order bright fringe of lambda 1 and sixth order bright fringe of lambda 2 are happening at the same point on the screen. So if this point I'm taking, then on this point, fourth order bright fringe of lambda 1 and sixth order bright fringe of lambda 2, both are at this point. It means both are at the same angle. Then, then we have to calculate the lambda 2. Question is damn easy. What, what you will do? This angle is same now. And you know that basic formula. You just need to use d sine theta is equal to what n lambda. We already know this formula for constructive interference for bright fringes, right? So, and we already know that if approximations are true, then sine theta can be written as theta. So, uh, theta can be written as n lambda by t. Done. And if this theta is same for both the wavelengths for this this order, it means for first n will become four. For second, n will become 6. So this theta can be written as 4 lambda 1 by t. And this theta can also be written as 6 lambda 2 by t. Equate these two. Done. And you will get the answer. 
here is your answer lambda 1 is given lambda 2 you can use d will be same now because for same setup two wavelengths are getting used setup is same then this d will be same this uh, d will be same getting my point done okay so this is what you needed to do here again some sort of questions this distance they talk about so if they are talking about this distance this distance calculation is very easy again if approximations are true and theta you know how to write then this distance can be written as theta into capital d just like a arc you have to treat okay so that we will, i will also discuss in wave optics when we will be doing the question from that portion okay chalo so that was a easy question very easy again this was very easy question i am saying you now ki agar uh, you uh, if you were like ki you have revised through the thing if you know the concept you would have done some 10 questions very easily done but nothing to worry about just appear in test very seriously and go through all these 13 14 questions very seriously again don't waste your time on those four five questions which are very lengthy because in the exam that is not going to get click at the point so it's not worth to give it attention from now onwards as well done so focus on these certain important questions only out of 80 that is used right and this question this is very easy two diagrams were given right jaise dekho before doing this question i just want to revise one thing in ncert ncert is your uh, uh, base textbook right so the question was something like ki uh, there are two coils and this is connected to suppose some uh, ac source so what will happen here flux will change because current is changing so self induced emf will come in this coil also this coil is connected to the ac source here also flux is changing and this flux linkage will be with this also so this coil will have flux changing because of current in in, in its own circuit and also because of flux changing in the side voice coil so induced emf in this coil can be written as what basic thing can be written as emf you write as what minus d5 by d you write now and here uh, flux is changing because of current in its own circuit and also because of flux changing in the side voice coil so here emf can be written as minus l di by dt because of flux change in the same coil minus m di by dt because of the mutual inductance flux change in the side voice coil so this was the equation we will be using and again we need to be careful about i here this if this is i1 and this is i2 then this is my i1 and this is my i mutual inductance is because of this current and self inductance is because of this current done so same thing you needed to use here yahan pe kya hai question is given there are two coils right in the first coil current i1 is flowing its self inductance is l1 here current i2 is flowing its self inductance is l2 suppose and between these two coils mutual inductance is given as m question was asked ki uh, uh what was the question uh yes b1 is asked compute b1 in volt induced emf in the first coil so in the first coil emf will get induced because of self inductance first so that is minus l d i1 by dt current in its own coil that is i1 and then current will also get induced because of mutual inductance because of current change in this coil and that is d i2 by dt plus this thing you needed to do now put the values so if you are going to put the values what value you are going to put l is given as l1 here it is l1 sorry so l1 is 50 milli henry so 50 into 10 to the power minus 3 into d i1 by dt so i1 is increasing actually at the rate of 120 ampere per second so this is 120 again there was a minus sign here Ri write the signs carefully theek okay? hai minus m ka value now you put m is 15 milli henry again and here the current in second is decreasing be careful decreasing 200 ampere per second so if it is decreasing you need to give here minus sign so minus how much 200 done now you write the values now you solve it so if you are going 
to solve it, what value we're going to get? This is uh, 12 into 5, 60. And this is minus 3. Teen zeros will also come. So this will become minus 6. And this minus minus became plus. And this is 15 into 2, 3000 into 10 to the power minus 3. That is 3. So value is minus 3 volt. And it's modulus it was asking. So its modulus value will be how much? It will be your 3 volt. So this is your answer, right? So this is your answer. Done. Now, again, this was a question very easy. All these questions are from the first portion only. So what was the question here? You all must have done it. So there is a light ray incident on the face of a glass prism perpendicular to it. Light is incident perpendicularly on first surface. So if light is perpendicular, it will go like this, undeviated, right? Because INR is going to become zero. The angle of emergence of light ray on other face of the prism is 45 degrees. So for another face, draw the perpendicular line. And this angle of emergence is how much? 45 degrees. What is the apex angle A of the prism? So it is asking what will be A? If the speed of light in the glass prism is this. Find, uh, feel sine A, A in OMR. In OMR C, you needed to feel the value of sine A. So let's be careful now. We have to calculate sine A. So this is A. This is 90. This will become how much? This will become 90 minus A. And if this is 90 minus A, this whole is 90. So this will become how much? A. Done. Question is solved. Apply Snell's law at this point. So you will be writing mu sine A is equal to 1 into sine 45. Because this is, is air. Done. Nothing else is given about its refractive index. We are going to take it as 1. So mu value can be written as refractive index is written as what? C by B. Speed of light in uh, vacuum divided by speed of light in media. So this is 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by 24 into 4 zeros into kilometer. Yani ki 24 into 10 to the power 7 into sin A is equal to 1 by root 2. Now what will be the value? Uh, this is 8 and this is your 1 0 remaining. So this will become sin A value will become 8 by 10 root 2. Done. Now you do one thing. This is 4. This is 5. This will become 2 root 2 by 5. You just need to solve it. So 2 into 1.4, 2.8 by 5, something that you need to write. Take it. So point, uh, uh, point 0.5 something you will be getting. Done. I hope this is clear again. Now we will be coming to second paper. Again, from second paper also, I have taken such kind of questions only. So from first paper, till now we solved 9 or 10 questions. So all questions were like what? All questions were like if you know the basic concept and a little bit of into applications uh, or I must say ki some deep concepts if you know basic plus deep then you must have done all these questions. Chalo. So this is your second paper. And this question again this you know what happens sometimes but at, uh, at looking the uh, Mechanics question, we just uh, try to avoid, but we need to read it. We need to read it. Why? Because it might be easy. It might be from the basic concepts, plus only some deep concepts, not much calculation. So we need to give it a try. We need to first read the question and see if I know the basic concept of this or not. If basic concept is there, let's do it. So here also you need it just the basic. So there is a solid sphere of mass m. Just give me a uh, more 30 or 15 seconds. I just need to have some water. Hello. Take it. Uh, so what is the question? There is a solid sphere done. There is a solid sphere given here. Chalo, let's draw a line here. This is the center, suppose. What is happening? This is placed on a smooth horizontal surface. So this is placed 
on a smooth horizontal surface is mu is equal to 0 now what is happening a sudden blow is given horizontally to the sphere a horizontal blow is given to it means a force at a height 4r by 5 above the central line so at what height this force is acting this force is acting at a height of 4r by 5 then above the center if i is the impulse of the blow then I is what? Impulse. What is impulse? Impulse is basically the change in momentum. Then I, we already know it is FTT or change in momentum. Then initially it is in rest. Finally, because of this force, it will have some velocity. So I can be written as what? Initial momentum, zero. Final momentum, MV. So it can be written as MV. Again, this V will be what? It will be the velocity of center of mass. Because if something if something gets a force and it starts moving, uh, suppose in this direction, it means horizontally. It means it's each element will have a velocity, forward velocity in this direction. Then, and this velocity is equal to the velocity of center of mass. So this is m v. Where v is the velocity of center of mass here? Then now i is equal to m v. Velocity of a sphere just after impulse provided is. I by M is the option given. So velocity will be I by M only. You know, basic thing, impulse, change in momentum, V is I by M, then sorted. So D is correct. Now, minimum time after which the highest point will touch the ground. Or a core coach hai, angular velocity of the sphere just after impulse provided. Linear velocity is asked, also the angular velocity is asked. So if linear impulse in the question is given, can we calculate angular impulse? What will be the angular impulse? So angular impulse, if you remember angular impulse, that is equal to R cross MV. R cross linear impulse, right? Done. So linear impulse is how much? MV. That is your I. So, uh, uh, that is your i, i by n, this is. Now, what will be the angular impulse? An angular impulse can be written as what? Angular impulse can be written as what? Just a linear impulse can be written as change in linear momentum. Angular impulse can be written as change in angular momentum. Okay. So, angular momentum can be written as initial angular momentum will be what? Its moment of inertia around the center into omega. Initially, its omega was zero. Finally, its omega will have some value. So suppose that is omega into uh, its moment of inertia. Again, around center, we have to take. So that will be 2 by 5 mr square. Done. So this is our case. Now, what will be the angular impulse ka value? Linear impulse is given. Linear impulse is acting at this point. F dt. This is acting at this point and its value is how much? I Angular impulse, I told you, R cross linear impulse. So, R, R cross this. The linear impulse line is this only, na? Huh? and it is acting at a distance 4R by 5 from the center of mass. Then, so, how you will calculate the angular impulse? Basic thing. How we calculate the angular impulse? R cross MB. And R R we take from where? From the point of reference. And if in the question point of reference is not given, I'm telling you in mechanics, two point of reference you can always take. One for sure center of mass and another for sure around the axis of rotation. So in this question, axis of rotation is not mentioned, nothing. So blindly we can take a, a, a reference point as center of mass. This is a very important point in mechanics actually. What happens in rotation now? Sometimes we get confused around which point we need to calculate things. So only two points you have, you should have in your head. Center of mass or axis of rotation. If axis of rotation is not clear, go with the center of mass. Done. If center of mass is not clear, go with the axis of rotation. Either of these one should be clear, right? So here I'm taking center of mass. You can easily take then, so R value you will be taking from center of mass, 4R by 5. So here you write 4R by 5 into I. This is your word, angular impulse. Now I'm going to put the value. So 
So here, four R by five into I. You just calculate it now. Uh, so one R will get cancelled, and uh, uh, two two. So omega value is how much? Two I by m. Two I by m R. So here it is given I by m R. This is wrong. It will be how much? Two I by m R. Done. Now the question is the minimum time after which the highest point will touch the ground. So we need to be a bit careful. This is this was the sphere. This was the highest point. Done. So if it is touching the ground, it means what? If it is touching the ground, it means suppose suppose it went somewhat here because it it is having both velocity and also angular moment. Uh, sorry, angular velocity. So it will go forward also and it will rotate also. And after traveling this much distance, suppose this point initially this was A, and now this A point has come suppose here A point. So how much angle it has covered? Just try to make it more simple and simple. So initially it was here, and finally it is here. So how much angle it has covered? This point. How much angle it has covered? Pi. Done. So in what time will it come from here? From here to here. From here to here. After what time it will come? So angular displacement is how much pi? So theta can be written as omega t. This is pi. Omega value we already have calculated. Omega is two i by m r. Two i by m r. So t how by uh, after what time will it come there? Uh, that is your two i by pi m r. Clear? So this is the time again. Uh, m r pi by two i. So uh, m r t. Okay, I have written it in the wrong way. It will be m r pi by two i. Done. So the first option is also correct. Now let's move on to the b. The displacement of center of mass during this interval. Question is interesting. Center of mass during this time has traveled how much? This much. Done. In this time, which time? This time. What is the velocity of center of mass? Already we have calculated b, है ना? I equal to we have written m b. So v was what? I by m. So how much distance center of mass has covered? V into t. So v is how much? I by m. T is how much? M r pi by two i. Ha. So this is i. I got cancelled. Pi r by two. So if you know the basic question was not tough. It has only the basic information, no lengthy calculation. Go the straight way, and you will be getting the answer. Okay. I'm discussing because we need to actually learn how to solve things. Now this was also an interesting question. You just needed to be confident in this question, or else you would have done it. Mechanical energy of system is given by this. What is the mechanical energy formula given here? A x square. Plus P V square. Done. This is the question. Done. We just need to look at it carefully. Done. This is mechanical energy. Means kinetic energy plus potential. Kinetic energy function of velocity. Potential energy function of position. Done. Potential energy function of position. So here kinetic energy. This is basically my potential energy. Am I? This is what potential energy, and this is what kinetic. Sorted. Now, once you have figured out this thing, all the options are sorted. We can now calculate maximum x coordinate is. Yani ki it is asking about the maximum x coordinate means you just go to the spring thing. Because in a spring also we get potential plus kinetic wala thing. So any one system you can consider. So if I consider a spring, we have learned that at mean position x is zero, at extreme position x is equal to maximum, and here velocity equal to zero, here velocity equal to max. So maximum x coordinate at maximum x coordinate velocity will be zero. So up here, you do what? Make velocity as zero for first done. So for first. What I am going to do? I am going to make the velocity zero. So e will become equal to what? A x square. So x will be equal to how much? E by a. Okay. Okay. 
done. Now, maximum velocity of the particle. Velocity is maximum when, when x is equal to what? Zero. So, equate x to zero now. So, for second, I'm going to do what? For second, I'm going to do E equal to BV square. So, B will be equal to how much? Maximum velocity will be how much? E by B. So, this option is wrong. Now, x equal to zero is the equilibrium position. How we calculate the equilibrium position? Again, it's talking about equilibrium. Equilibrium only we gets in, uh, uh, in the system where potential energy wala thing is coming into action, right? And here potential energy is there. And what is the potential energy value here? Ax squared, right? And uh, we already know that equilibrium position ka matlab what? Equilibrium position means the position at which force is equal to zero. Huh? And for, from potential energy, we can calculate force. How? Because we have learned that force is equal to minus rate of change of potential energy with distance. Done? So you, you need to do that here. So minus d by dx of ax squared. And that is how much? Minus 2 ax. At equilibrium, force is zero. Equate it to zero. So it will become how much? x equal to zero. So definitely x equal to zero is what? Equilibrium position. Done. The acceleration of system at any point is this. Again, it's asking about the acceleration. Acceleration we can easily calculate. Now, if we have calculated force, force is what? Minus du by dx. So, force equal to minus du by dx. And this is equal to minus, sorry, it was 2ax, right? Minus 2ax. Force can be written as mass into acceleration. Acceleration can be written as minus 2a by m x. Done. But in the option, what is given? M term is not given. In the question, mass is also not given. So we need to calculate mass. How we can do that? We can do that very easily. Kinetic energy is given, bb square. Done. And from here, we can calculate what? Uh, we can calculate our mass. Done. Half mb square. Just say, uh, you can write here half mv square equal to uh, bv square. Then v square, v square got cancelled. So m is how much? 2b. Sorry, it was also half. No, this is not half. So this is your how much? 2b. So mass is how much? 2b. Now put m as 2b. So minus 2a by 2b x. So it is becoming how much? Minus ax by b. So acceleration is how much? This is your minus a x by b. Correct? Is it clear? Kisi ko doubt hai to bata do. Anyone having any doubt? Just say something. Okay. Okay. Done. 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 So again, this was the question from your wave optics. Okay. Wave optics. Now, what we needed to learn here, what we needed to remember here in order to solve this question, simple we needed to learn that what happens when light get reflected from the denser medium matlab suppose if what is happening uh, this is suppose air and this is glass so this is rarer and this is your what this is your denser correct so light is falling from rarer to denser from denser it is getting Reflected. So in 11th class, again, you must have studied reflection by rigid surfaces of waves. Light is also considered as wave sometimes, right? So if light is taken as a wave, then, and if reflex, reflection is happening from the denser media, then this light will suffer a phase change of pi. It will suffer, like in the wave, we have studied that if wave is going like this, and if this is a rigid surface, this is wall, 
fixed at this point this point is fixed then this wave will suffer phase change of pi pi means it will get something like this samajh rahe ho so phase change of pi happen if light gets reflected by denser media and if uh, by uh, rarer media then no phase change happens then and again pi phase change means how much length change is happening lambda by 2 because lambda is treated as 2 pi you know if length difference is lambda it means angle difference is how much 2 pi this thing is very important to keep in mind in order to solve the question so now what is the question consider a thin film of thickness l so this was a thin film then so what was happening actually there was a thin film of something suppose oil this is and its refractive index is 1 by 4 then light is falling on this surface as a and it is getting here and it is getting reflected like this because light is falling normally then but the thing is now this this has some medium mu1 and this media is different mu that is why this box is made okay so uh, it is asking that what will be the uh, what will be the like if you read the option 1 for 1 and 2 for 1 and 2 this one and this two the reflection at film interfaces causes zero phase difference for two reflected rays two reflected rays it is talking about first reflected ray which one first from the first surface of film that is from this surface of film and second from where from this surface of film from bottom surface of film so in each case we have to see the, uh, what will be the phase difference between two lights one getting reflected from the first surface and another getting reflected from the second surface okay that we have to see here very carefully now uh, let's look at that so this light traveled traveled came here the one that got reflected from here only uh, from this first surface only suffered some phase change or not this light is falling from 1.5 to 1.4 yani ki from denser to rarer so no phase change of pi then now consider the second surface to reach the second surface first the light must have traveled this distance that distance is your how much l so it suffered length change how much l again at this surface reflection will happen second surface i'm talking about again light is falling from 1.4 to 1.3 denser to rarer no phase change of pi right and after falling on this surface light will again go like this then clear here what i am telling you is this is the film see carefully this is a very important concept it will come so what happening light coming here some part of light okay let me show you by uh, by letting a light which is coming obliquely suppose theta angle then so some part of this light will get reflected it got reflected and some part of this light will enter the slab enter this thin film and, and inside this film again it will encounter this surface draw the normal at this surface and again reflection will happen at this surface so this light and then it will refract outside so in your question it is talking about interference between these two lights it is talking about these two reflected lights think okay yeah. one reflected by the first surface and another reflected by the second surface done but here the question is made easy by uh, normal incidence theek okay. yeah. hai to chalo ab main wahi kar rahi hu first case क्या होगा वट विल हैपन इन द फर्स्ट केस द लाइट दैट इज गेटिंग रिफ्लेक्टेड बाई द फर्स्ट सर्फेस इज नॉट सफरिंग एनी फेज चेंज बिकॉज ऑफ मीडिया चेंज डन बिकॉज लाइट इज फॉलिंग फ्रॉम डेंसर टू रेयर सो नो फेज चेंज नाउ फ्रॉम टू रीच द सेकेंड सर्फेस इट ट्रेवल एल लेंथ एंड अगेन हियर लाइट इज फॉलिंग फ्रॉम वन पॉइंट फोर टू वन पॉइंट थ्री नो फेज चेंज ऑफ पाई अगेन इट विल इट विल गो बैक it will go back like this so again it will travel l distance then so how much extra length second ray of light has traveled that we need to see here how much extra length it has covered 12 done kyunki first one 
got reflected by this only now it has traveled to a length so extra 2l length it covered so what will be the space difference between these two lights for normal incidence for first case case 1 ke liye i am i am calling it 2l done now all cases we will be quickly quickly writing now case 2 first light falling from denser to rarer no phase change second light again extra length it will cover 2l again light is falling from rarer to denser here phase change of pi will happen then so here phase change of pi is happening so how much uh, extra length it is covering like extra length it is covering 2l and extra phase change pi pi means how much length lambda by 2 so this much extra length in second one case 3 in case 3 right uh, like that uh, first is falling from denser to rarer again no phase change of pi then second light ke sath kya ho raha hai what is happening extra length to 2l it will cover and it is falling from rarer to denser again phase change again length change of lambda by 2 because phase change of pi will happen so this is 2l plus lambda by 2 now come to the case 4 case 4 first light is first light is falling from denser to rarer sorry rarer to denser fourth case so first light will suffer a phase change of pi first light yani ki lambda by 2 and second light will travel extra 2l length and it is again falling from denser rarer to denser it will also suffer a phase change of uh, how much pi yani ki extra length of lambda by 2 so second has phase change or length change of how much 2l plus lambda by 2 so what will be the difference between these two 2l plus lambda by 2 minus lambda by 2 so what will be it it will be again 2l then what is the significance of this l given l is given here 3 lambda by 2 so in first case in case 1 what is the path difference between these two 2l l is 3 lambda by 2 so this is equal to 3 lambda case 2 how much was the difference it was 2l plus lambda by 2 2l is equal to 3 lambda 3 lambda plus lambda by 2 it is equal to how much 7 lambda by 2 what is the case 3 here case 3 was how much it was again same as uh, second one so 2l plus lambda by 2 again this is 7 lambda by 2 and case 4 is same as first one that is your 3 lambda okay now read the options for 1 and 2 for 1 and 2 it is saying the reflection at film interference causes zero phase difference for two reflected rays for one and two zero phase difference is it happening for one and two zero phase difference is happening between two reflected rays no it has a phase difference or a length difference of something right so that is not correct for two and three for two and three uh the reflection at film interference causes a phase difference of pi for two reflected rays again accordingly you can read here uh, i have just explained the cases now you can one by one read it done and you can answer clear here what you needed to check is concept is clear or not let me know now reflection at thin film interference if concept is not clear i will explain a bit more so that i head in the topics you won't be doing the mistake Otherwise, options are now very easy to read. Actually, I have written everything out here. Is concept clear? Anyone? Let me know. If not, I will uh, do something to explain. Tripti, Kishore, Hariyo, any one of you? No clear? So you can uh, frankly tell me no. And if it is clear. can anyone everyone hear me should we move ahead kya hua everyone is stuck okay thank you चलो 
again this is a uh, important question actually i want to discuss uh, capacitor question is there so what point i will be discussing here not much time is left actually so what i will do i will uh, discuss the basic so what is the basic thing that you needed to know here one thing is there was a capacitor it was charged to some voltage by a battery here the question was that theek hai so this is a v volt this is a c so it will have a charge of how much cb then it has how much charge it has charge of cb now if dielectric we are inserting what will happen its capacity will increase how many times kc times so new charge will become how much kcb so how much extra charge extra charge you can easily calculate that is your cb k minus 1 so extra charge it is asking that you can very easily answer now important thing that you need to uh, uh, understand here is what happens when we put the dielectric you just try to see here if i am putting the dielectric dielectric is what a insulator and we have discussed that if insulator is kept in an electric field what happens since it has less number of free charges but still it has some its negative charge will move opposite to the electric field and positive charge will move in the direction of electric field inside dielectric and that shifting of charge will generate electric field inside then that will be opposite to the external electric field and net electric field inside the dielectric will reduce by certain factor that we have studied e not by k it becomes right so you just notice the pattern of charge getting accumulated on the surface of dielectric it is negative on this surface so suppose i am putting this dielectric inside what will happen inside electric field is in this sense so as i will bring dielectric inside the capacitor this surface will accumulate negative charge and this surface will accumulate what positive charge so what is happening this positive charge of capacitor plate will attract the dielectric because its near surface is having negative charge so this positive this negative attraction will happen but if attraction is happening what will happen this capacitor will try to quickly pull the capacitor uh, uh, pull the dielectric inside the capacitor then it means it will try to pull it then and if you have to bring it very slowly that is the case here in the question very slowly means without any acceleration then you need to do a work on it in the opposite sense you need to apply a force on it in the opposite sense then only then only it will nullify the electrostatic force because of electric field here then because of the attraction of capacitor then so to put the dielectric inside the capacitor in such a way that net acceleration is zero we need to do some work on it because here the electric field is doing some work on that then same amount of positive work uh, like if capacitor if this electric field is doing negative work on this uh, dielectric we need to do the same amount of force means some work is happening here because of the electric field present now read the question carefully read the option c and d energy supplied by cell so what happens the moment we are putting the dielectric the here is the battery and this is supplying energy it is doing work and that energy will get a stored somewhat in the form of a uh, uh, capacitor energy that is your half cv square then because c is increasing so half cv square is also increasing so some energy is getting a stored in the form of uh, potential energy of capacitor where else is the energy going so some work will get done in uh, pulling the capacitor down uh, sorry in pulling the dielectric down the capacitor okay so and here no more resistance factor is coming into account no nothing is uh, getting talked about resistor in this uh, case so what we are going to write energy supplied by cell will increase the stored potential energy of capacitor also it will get stored in the form of work done on the person who is filling the dielectric slab a person is doing some work this electric field will also do some work on this dielectric in sense on the person in opposite sense done and the option was what energy supplied by cell equal to increase in stored potential energy work done by the person who is filling the dielectric slab plus heat produced 
Again, heat will get produced only if resistance is present there. That's not there, right? So heat produced is non-zero. No, it's zero. Then, so this is wrong. This is wrong. And this is correct. And this is correct. If you will calculate this, you will find that's correct. Okay. So I hope it is clear. Raise doubt if you're having in any of the questions and you want me to solve those doubts, you can contact me. You ask your teachers to uh, establish a connection point between me and you so that it can, can be done. Any kind of help, I'm there available for you people. So just let me know about that. Okay. So bye-bye. Take care. And tomorrow we will be coming here again with uh, ray optics question, two questions. Again, we will be discussing what concepts. Take care. Chalo. Take care, stay healthy, stay safe, keep, keep enjoying. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye.